Hello and welcome back to this episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. <laughs> this time a little bit different, a different tone of voice. Um, but yeah, actually we are going to talk about uh, Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek today. Uh, and because there will be two episodes today, uh, yeah, I don't have to pretty much uh, keep attention to what I'm going to talk about today. But I still before have, uh, you know, quite quite um, looked at it and I've just you know been like okay you know what have I been talking about and yeah and it's that one and we have stopped with have courage Simon identifies courage as one of the most important characteristics of a leader as a leader you need to represent yourself as someone who is courageous and can provide protection to those to those working below you in return, workers will feel trusted and they will feel like they have space, freedom, freedom and ability to work harder and innovate on new ideas, take risks and know that they will be backed up by the leaders. Simon emphasizes that the result is always better work. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we've actually been through this. So if you're interested in, you know, in general, the uh, Eaters Lead Last book by Simon Sinek, I will definitely invite you to just uh, check out the, um, the episode before or the episode before the episode before, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So two episodes before that one, because uh, it could be like, okay, um, the other episode is the other book and therefore I would just, uh, yeah. I would just suggest you to go to one of the two episodes from yesterday and one of them should be the first part of this one. And actually, um, if you are on a podcast, just, you know, look at the description of the episode and there everything should be because I always tend to summarize a little bit what I've been talking about in the episode so that people actually can see it much faster what, um, yeah, if it is interesting to them or not. <laughs> um uh, virtual world and abstractions. Yeah, we thread that one as well. Managed abstraction. Blah, 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 blah. Be patient, yeah, when it comes to... Mm. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please wait a little bit. Um... I think I will definitely, um, I will start with when it becomes destructive, because I think this is quite a good point to, to start again. There are actually some very, very great insights um, before this point. So therefore, please check out the other, the other episode. There is just a pretty, there's pretty much in it, I think. Or go to the paulminers.com website. It's totally for free. Everybody can read it. And yeah, whether you like, you know, reading yourself more or you like listening to someone who is reading it as quite an audiobook definitely <laughs> so when it becomes destructive simon con simon's concept of destructive abundance or abundance i think it's abundance right uh, is the result of this imbalance it happens when leaders when leaders prioritize the results the margin profit product over the people who are responsible for creating the results the employees managers and staff which is definitely a pretty bad point you could you know you could do because without the people and without the customers and you know without your employees your whole company is to totally fucked you know you can't do anything without the people who are working for you and therefore being nice to the people and just um yeah making sure that they feel good that they are fulfilled that they have a job they actually like is i think pretty important Destructive abundance or abundance, sorry, <laughs> happens when the players focus almost exclusively on the score and forget when they or why they set out to play the game in the first place. Definitely, you know, I just, you know, thinking about my old time where I was playing soccer in a, in a club, actually, um, I felt like, yeah, you know, when everything is only about the score and so on, it's only about work. I think, you know, it's not that much of fun, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> instead of being like, okay, I will just play because it's, you know, what I like, that's what my passion, but yeah, leadership lessons, I think this is the actual point that's new in this episode, and I quite hope that we can go through the whole one today, you know, it always depends on how long I make the episode, and I quite tend to just make them a little bit, 
a little bit um bit little bit shorter in the in the meantime because I quite think like okay um there are quite a lot of people who do not have that much time to go through a one hour episode um so therefore just making an episode that's uh, you know some sort of in the podcast space because podcasts tend to be in general a little bit longer um, might be key so leadership lessons simon outlines his five key leadership lessons so goes the culture so goes the culture so goes the company essentially simon explains that if the culture is lacking the company successes the company successes will also be lacking. When a culture is one of trust, the company will, will repeat the benefit of innovation and hard work. And this is definitely one of the points that I was discussing yesterday as well, because I think, yeah, if the um, company internally is some kind of destructed and, you know, nothing is quite working and everybody hates, you know, everybody quite... Um, then, you know, the, out, the output of the product and, you know, the, the outside... Uh, the output of the company, sorry, and the outside of the the company itself will also be in some kind of way, because yeah, it makes sense. You know, it's the same thing as, okay, you know, maybe in a family. You know, if the family itself just hates, you know, hates itself. You know, like everybody is hating another one, and so everybody hates each other quite. Um, then totally, you can see it from the outside as well. You know, definitely. Um, so goes the leader, so goes the culture. In this rule, Simon emphasizes the importance of the leader taking responsibility for their employees, whether it be success or failures. And that's definitely true. I think a lot of leaders and those CEOs just some kind of get their role wrong. You know, they are quite, you know, they are quite the leaders and they are blamed for everything because they are the ones who just, you know, give the, the um, instructions and they, they say what everybody is doing quite, you know, yeah, uh, actually, totally, you know, it depends. I was just thinking about, okay, you know, there might be some something in between, some employees in between, you know, the CEO might not talk to the internship guy because he might talk to his manager or to the internship guy's manager. <laughs> Therefore, he doesn't have something to do directly with the internship guy or girl. Um, but at the end, he's just the one who just, you know, tells everybody something. And he's also the one who just fires and, and hires the people. And therefore, he is just, you know, to blame for everything that happens in the company. And I think a lot of people get that wrong. They are always like, okay, no, this is not my fault. It's his fault and whatever. Um, but at the end, the leader is just really working for the employees and not the other way around. To give them responsibility and hold them accountable to... To give them responsibility and hold them accountable to advance the mission. If the captain provides direction and protection, the crew will do what needs to be done to advance this mission. Totally, you know, if the employees just have, have the safety and they just know that they will be secure and everything is okay, they have a job and so on and so on and so on, they will totally work. And, you know, especially when they are just fulfilled and happy with what they're doing, they will just, you know, work harder, you know. Everything, as he also explained and he also pointed out, everything just results in better and harder work in terms of you and the relationship with your employees. So you as leader and the, the relationship to your employees, definitely. Integrity matters, which is the third, third point. This one's pretty obvious. Leaders need to have integrity, telling the truth, no matter what is the foundation for building essential trust. Totally. And I think it's, it's the same thing for, for everything, for every relationship in life, you know, just being, just saying the truth and just telling the truth. And that's one of the points um, where I do just have to say, I don't understand why people online do just talk about so much shit, you know, a lot of people just, you know, fake things like, you know, I have a big car, even though they haven't, and so on and so on and so on, um, which is but definitely quite a difficult topic for me because um, I quite see or I quite think when I just see people who are just wearing pretty nice clothes and they just dress as they were, you know, pretty rich, I kind of feel like, okay, um, is it really worth spending the money for the clothes or would it be more intelligent or more, you know, or better quite to just, you know, invest the money you've just, you know, uh, invested, invested for me, buying clothes is definitely not an investment quite, um, yeah, it depends, I, I will go on, <laughs> so just, you know, would it, wouldn't it be better to just invest the money you put out for clothes into your 
actual business and therefore just get out of it more or get more out of it in return or is it like some people might get more work through the clothes they are wearing because actual other people just you know think like okay he is trustworthy he knows what he is doing you know he is clothed you know like that and therefore he just has to know certain things and has to be good at what he is doing this is the other way i'm thinking you know, it's just, just really complicated and really difficult. And this is quite something that I've been like, okay, hmm, is there really something about clothes that could you make, you know, more money because you're wearing them? I don't know. I think, you know, if you're a rapper and you're not wearing cool clothes, you're not a rapper because it's, you know, in the scene, at my point of view, quite just seems to be like this and, you know, having laces and whatever. <laughs> and yeah, but, but it would be interesting what, what you think about that. You know, I'm just really, really split into two parts. The, the first one says, or one of them says, okay, no, buying clothes is totally a waste of money. And the other one says, okay, but actually some people might make more money because they're wearing so they're wearing certain clothing. But yeah, friends matter too. I think in general, connections just matter a lot. You know, if you just know the right persons, your business will be just, you know, growing faster because... Yeah, for example, if you're an artist in terms of making music and you know producers and you know just some labels and whatever, it might be much easier for you to, to get a job or to, to get put on um, than if you just, you know, were somebody. You know, you don't know anybody and, you know, yeah. Actually, actually having something in my ears is pretty retarded. <laughs> Not retarded, but it's some kind, some kind of disturbing me. So, but let's see what he tells about friends. Simon emphasizes the importance of bonding with your colleagues outside of the working environment. Definitely. And I think it's definitely important to just meet with your employees as well, uh, you know, in the outside of work or outside of work. Because, yeah, it will just, you know, strengthen the, the, um, the relationship. And especially if you need just these kind of people and if you just need these employees, maybe... Uh, it's the manager, the CEO, CMO or the CDO. You know, there are certain people you just don't want to miss out. So, yeah. Um, leaving the workplace behind gives you the opportunity to really get to know each other. See your colleagues as people and friends rather than co-workers or even worse, competitors. The fifth one is lead the people, not the numbers. Perhaps the one that Simon talks about the most throughout the book, businesses need to look beyond or beyond profit. Although it is the goal for every company or of every company, it cannot be the primary priority. Um, it's the it is the leaders of companies that see profit as fuel for the cultures that will outlast their dopamine addiction, cortisol soaked competitors. And I think that's definitely true. At my point of view, uh, success and money and all these good things are just byproducts. Um, in terms of you personally and just, you know, apply to your personal life, it will definitely be a byproduct of being happy and doing something that you love and that you're passionate about. For companies, at my point of view, it will definitely be just having or having a great relationship to your employees because, you know, you just need your employees. These are like oxygen, you know, and if you have, you know, good employees and you treat them well, they will work well and therefore you will generate more money. And besides that, um, employees is a thing. Just thinking because I, I, was, <laughs> I was thinking about another thing just before. Uh, employees, what is also, yeah, and the customers, totally. You know, if you just fuck around with the customers and they won't come and just, you know, you get one job of them, it won't be so, such a good thing, you know. And if you're just, you know, willing to get as much money from them and not really kind of make your service as well as you can. You know, I think a lot of people just, you know, want the money, but at the end it comes to the point where, you know, their customers just say, okay, you know, I'm unhappy with their service and I just, you know, really want to get some to someone else. You know, it always comes up to if you're really having a contract with your contract with your uh, customers or not. But, but yeah, always have a good product or service. I think, I think this is very, very, very important. You know, I, I just really mean fucking important because having a great product actually just makes it way easier to to market it to to just you know bring it to people to i don't know everything is easier if you just have a good product you know you make more money because you have a good product you can market it better and therefore make more money if you have a good product and yeah 
and people will stick to it. You know, if it is especially the only product in <clears throat> in such a quality on the market, they will be, they will definitely come to you and be like, okay, yeah, I want to have your product or your service, whatever. Um, are we the problem? Simon defines the difference between leaders and managers as managers as follows. Leaders take responsi responsibility for lives, not numbers. Managers look after numbers and the results. Simon believes that all managers have the opportunity to be leaders, but need to take a step back and look at themselves as the problem and start focusing on protect protecting the people, not their numbers. Simon insightfully compares incentives incentive programs uh, to drug and alcohol addiction. Drug and alcohol addictions are essentially dopamine addictions. We are addi addicted to the rush they give us. In the corporate world, incentive programs are another way to get a hit of dopamine. We become addicted to performance and just like drug and alcohol addictions, this becomes unhealthy. Simon explains that, uh, that it's the strife for success and performance at any cost that becomes the issue and not the success itself. It becomes unhealthy and imbalanced when a motive is all about the results and overrides looking after the employees and those responsible for the results. In healthy organizations, as in a healthy society, the drive to win should not precede the desire to take care of the very people we claim to serve. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and I think it just, you know, plays into the hands as or in, in what I was just talking about before, which is like, you know, if you just take care of, of your employees and your customers, you will totally make money, but, you know, not the other way around. You know, if you only care about the money, your employees will, you know, go away and your customers will go away. And, you know, at the end, you just have no money, which is, you know, the only thing that drives you or drove you and the only thing that was some kind of essential to you. And at least... Or just, you know, this is really the end point where you just have to change up your mind, I think. It's all about service. Continuing his comparison to alcohol and drug addictions, Simon compares leadership to reaching step 12 in the AA program. He explains that when following the AA program, regardless of whether you complete the first 11 steps, it's only those that complete step 12 that ever truly overcome their addiction. Step 12 is about committing to other person, someone who is also addicted to alcohol and helping them overcome their addiction. And this is actually something that I've just seen or read before, which is, um, which is about learning or which was about learning. Um, it was first like mastering the thing yourself and then at the end teaching to someone else. And this is something in my point of view that's a pretty great way to learn things. Um, to just, you know, teach somebody else. Um, why? Because I think to really be able to teach a certain thing to somebody, you just have to know it yourself. Some kind of. And um, if you just teach it to somebody, you will definitely... Um, I don't know, you come across certain problems you haven't come across yourself and you know, you, you will just um, get another perspective and it is actually, there is actually a name for this, you know, just learning through teaching, there is an actual name for this. Step 12 is the commitment to help another alcoholic beat the disease. Step 12 is all about service and it is service that is the key to breaking our dopamine addictions in our organizations too. The example makes it very clear that a crucial element of leadership is the service to others. Service to those in the organization that need support, trust and respect in order to work hard and contribute to the organization thriving. Yeah, fucking yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hard. Definitely a point. A lot of people, and this was actually something that I've been um, talking about um, with my with the guy I'm going to, to have an internship at in the summer. And I was talking about, or I was asking him if he could just, you know, tell me a little bit more about business in the time I'm working for him. And he was like, yeah, I, you know, I, sh I shouldn't, I shouldn't really think about that. I should just, you know, pretty much uh, concentrate on making great designs because I'm, you know, actually interning at a uh, design agency or marketing agency also. And he was more like, okay, you know, it's a little bit too early for you and just, you know, just make the design part and try to make good designs and then we can talk about um, you know, then we can talk about having an own agency and starting with it. And um, and he also said, which is, you know, the point that I wanted to make, that, um, yeah, he said that if I would actually go to 
if if I so so me like Chris, <laughs> if I would actually just run this whole agency for a month long, I would totally cry because it's so hard to do this. It's just what he said in some kind of way, and um, which is I think the truth. You know, a lot of people uh, can think like, yeah, being an entrepreneur is so fun and whatever, but I, I don't think so. I'm not an entrepreneur yet in the you know in the common sense some kind of. I am some kind of because, yeah, this is what I'm doing right now, some kind of my business. And therefore, I just know it is hard. Yeah. And you will stress yourself out. Yeah. And it is definitely a challenge to not get overwhelmed by the things you want to do and not get just, you know, lazy and just give up actually as well. Because, yeah, I do have to put in a lot of fucking time to just, you know, be a be kind of be kind of satisfied with what I'm doing. You know, it's also or quite always in terms of who you are, you know, if you're just a person who is just happy with, I don't know, with making the minimum, yeah, your business won't grow that much, first of all, and second of all, yeah, you just will be happy, you know, this is a little bit of good and bad, uh, you know, thing, <laughs> so yeah, leadership is not a license to do less, it is a responsibility to do more, and that's the trouble, leadership takes work, it takes time and energy, the effects are not always easily measured, and they are not always immediate, leadership is always a commitment to human beings, leadership is not a license to do less, it's a responsibility to do more, I think that's totally right, because yeah, if you are a leader, it doesn't mean that you can sit back and just watch everybody working. You just have to organize more. You know, maybe you're not doing as much. So if you just, you know, kind of uh, went from being a designer at a company to being the leader of the company, it's definitely like, definitely like okay, you may not be working as much on on the thing that the, the uh, company actually produces because you, you do maybe have your people there to just quite organize this but you do just have to organize the people who are organizing the other things so in general you do have to work with people and you do have to be able to organize people and manage people and manage the business itself and see okay you know the numbers are great the people are happy and just yeah i think this is what a ceo actually does i don't think like yeah, totally, he just has to approve certain things and just has to say, okay, these certain tasks and these certain products are good or, you know, what's what's not good about certain things. Um, but, it, but, the, but at the end, I think that a leader quite often has to do with people and quite often does just, you know, manage people and uh, manage finances and so on. Yeah, the conclusion, this is actually or was actually the end of the summary. Um, reading and talking went quite bad today to be honest it's something i i do just have to admit i do just you know want to tell you want to tell myself to just see okay there are certain times and certain days where everything isn't going that well even though now it's a little bit better i think i do just have to to you know adapt to speaking in english again because you know if you just talk in another in another uh, language a whole day long it is definitely something not that easy to just adapt to it but yeah uh, the key takeaways. The first one is it's a basic human need to feel protected and respected. It's important that leaders make their employees feel this totally. And I think especially respected. I think a lot of leaders are just like, yeah, I give a fuck about the people who are working beneath me and they just, you know, are shit and, and whatever. But it, but at the end, I think it's just really important that um, people get respected and people just feel like okay they are worth something and they could feel like okay um, people need them and you know they are not unnecessary the second one is a happy and safe work culture will cultivate harder workers a happy and safe work culture will cultivate harder workers and more innovation the key is to empower your employees and enable them to work to their full potential yeah totally i think a lot of people are just you know below their full potential and they feel like, okay, you know, there is not like room above me and above my work power, which is, but at the end, not that, uh, not that a truth. Um, the third one is a true leader needs to allow, needs to always tell the truth and needs to be courageous. Totally. Uh, the fourth one is we live in a time where, where our reality is increasingly virtual. This creates an abstraction and leads to the dehumanization and we need to nurture our relationships and prioritize meeting people in real life 
I think in terms of real life, it also means just, you know, having a FaceTime with them or just, you know, uh, quite, you know, face-to-face -face talk, whether it's just really in person or it's just, you know, seeing somebody in a video. It is something different, but just, you know, it's something better than than not talking to each other at all or just, you know, talking on a phone or texting or sending emails. I think this would also be an option. The fifth one is time can be more valuable than money. Pay raises are not always the answer. Totally, you know, this is something or this was a story. I think it's it's from Gary Vee actually again. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty... Um, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy that I just some kind of um, found him because to be honest the first times I've seen him I was like you know I really hate this guy I didn't know why I actually you know really didn't know why it was like you know I don't want to watch his things I think it's just you know a waste of time I, I just don't like him but at the end or just you know while I was just you know uh uh, the actual point that determined my, my whole uh, perception of who he is and, you know, my whole thinking about him was that I was actually reading a book of him. I didn't know. I was reading Crushing It. I found it was quite a great book. It wasn't the best book, to be honest. Um, there were some insights that I really needed in terms of, you know, actual data, which were quite interesting and some other things that were interesting. But at the end, I, I quite thought, like, you know, there would have been much more in it and... Yeah, but I, I was quite happy for having this this some kind of experience because I was um I wasn't primed by knowing him, you know, because you know afterwards I just looked him up and I was like, okay, you know, I'm pretty interested in who he is actually. And then I found him and I realized, okay, you know, this is the guy I always hated. <laughs> Not quite hated. I don't hate. I, I just really don't want to hate people. But I quite um didn't like and then I was like, okay, just just it's interesting what he's doing and so on and um, he was actually the force that leaded me to doing what I'm doing right now. So therefore, I'm I'm pretty fucking happy for, for just you know, finding him for just you know, uh, listening to what he is saying and, um, yeah, pretty much now he's some kind of my idol and I would even say some kind of my my mentor because I just use a lot of things that he is saying. I just think and and believe in things that he is saying and, yeah, totally, um. Yeah, I think I made the point. <laughs> just thinking because I often just some kind of drift away and just you know talk about something else that was coming to my mind um, in at this at this point of time, which is always some kind of bad. But yeah, now I get it. No, I haven't <laughs> because actually, um, Gary V once gave some some football cards, so entrance cards, um, to to an uh, to an employee of his. And um, at the end, it turned out that this employee actually wanted to leave um, just, you know, just just at this point of time. And because he gave him some cards to, a, it was, I don't know, I don't know how to, to, to pronounce these, these people or these teams. Um, he gave him just, you know, an entrance card for a football game he, I think he was just liking or, or whatever he was a fan of. And therefore, you know, this this employee just didn't left and just stick to to Vayner Media, I think, or Vinyl. No, it was Vayner Media, I think. Um, you know, which is you know totally just an example for why time can be more valuable than money or just a pay raise, because I think yeah, a pay raise is something a lot of people like. Yeah, for sure, they want to have more money, but in the end, you know, if they're just doing something the whole day long that's not making them happy they won't get happy through having more money as well, or anyways. Businesses need to look beyond profit, although it is the goal of every company, it cannot be the primary primary priority. And that's totally true. And this is just some kind of, yeah, okay, uh, money is some kind of byproduct of happiness, and therefore you just focus on being happy, and therefore you just will have your money as well. Um or actually doing something that you love besides that. And it's not easy being a leader. It takes the time, patience and commitment. And that's totally the fucking thing. Yeah. Um, uh, so the further readings. So this was actually it with the, the summary of the book. Um, there were quite a lot of things in it. And um, I'm pretty happy to say, okay, these are all things I would suggest as well. So... Um, I often come to a point where, you know, in books there are certain things I would say, 
okay, yeah, I think this is some kind of true. And I think like, you know, I would suggest it to people as well. And this was totally a book where just quite everything was like this. And But sometimes books are like, you know, one half is something I would suggest and the other half is totally something I would say, no, please don't do this. But uh, this is actually a good book and I, um, yeah, pretty like Simon Sinek as well. Um, yeah, in terms of his beliefs and his worldview is definitely a great thing. So if you enjoyed this summary, check out Start With Why, also by Simon Sinek. Start With Why is about a naturally occurring pattern, a way of thinking, acting and communicating that gives some leaders the ability to inspire those around them. The more organizations and people who learn to also start with why, the more people there will be woke up feeling fulfilled by the work they do. The Art of People by Dave Kirpern is a great guide on how to manage some of the most important people and relationships in your life. Kirpern emphasizes that people can make all the difference between an average life and a great life. Definitely, you know, people are just a really great force. And I think, you know, actually because of people, you know, this is quite the only reason why I like going to school so much. You know, it's, I think it's not about, you know, you know, doing graphic design or, you know, being drawing all the time and, and whatever. I think it's, mainly because of the people that I'm just, you know, you know, that I'm just meeting there, or just being there, because these are all phenom- phenomenal people, and they're just so nice to be around with. Built to Last by Jim Collins examines a selection of visionary companies and identifies what, uh, what it takes to run a successful organization that will prosper over a long period of time. If you're looking to step up to a managerial or leadership position for the first time, check out the first time manager. And finally, how to influence and influence people. My lovely book by Dale Carnegie is, or Carnegie actually, is a book that aims to help you convince people to share your way of thinking, to avoid arguments and to become more liked. Um, actually, I was just thinking and debating with myself about what is or what was actually the best book that I've ever read, fully read. So I'm not just including book summaries, um, you know, and if I do this, I will definitely say I only read the count that is the summary. But um, actually, I would say the three best books definitely were um, How to Win Friends and Influence People, then uh, Men's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl which is definitely a very, very interesting book. Uh, I didn't get smart of it. I didn't get much out of it in terms of local ther- therapy, which is actually, um, yeah, the main purpose of the book, some kind of. So it's a psychology book, actually. But, you know, the story he was telling us so incredible, just incredible. They're not good. They're, you know, tremendously bad. and But incredible to just, you know, hear. And 1984 by George Orwell, which is, uh, or was definitely a book that I was enjoying reading and I was enjoying listening to because I went, you know, half through reading it and half through it just uh, listening to an audiobook, actually. And then the guidelines book, which is actually a summary of a lot of books from the author, which is or would be worth $300, but he actually sells it for 13 Then the actual action steps. Are you a leader? Take a step back and assess whether you are you, you are prioritizing profits or people. Take another look at Simon's definition of a manager versus a leader. Which category do you fall into? The second one is, if you are a leader of a team or organization, try organizing an outside of work event. Give everyone a chance to connect with you and each other on a more personal level. Third one is, identify three things that can you, that can you do every day that, that you can do every day to be a better leader. And if you like the summary, yeah, by Don Emerson. And for a great video summary of Leaders Eat Last, check out Simon's talk at the 99U conference, which is definitely and also linked on the paulminus.com website, which is totally great. I may I may be linking this website, so maybe you should even link it all the time when I'm just talking about a certain thing, which would be definitely good for you. You don't have to just, you know, search it on yourself and then whatever, which is definitely a a little more work and with that being said this is actually the end of the episode i hope you got something out of it you know in terms of talking it went not that well today which is a pity which is a little bit sad but um yeah sometimes you just have the contrast sometimes it doesn't work out that much especially yeah if it's just a four-eyeing language that's that's not your mother tongue but 
But yeah, I think in general I'm doing quite good with it, with speaking it and with understanding it and just, you know, pretty much being able to, yeah, read through summaries that are sometimes even about, you know, pretty, pretty hard and difficult to understand topics. And yeah, I will definitely just... Um, I will definitely just... Uh, uh, <laughs> I will definitely just get better and better at reading and speaking and so on. I think it's just a matter of time as well as yeah you know what i'm up to if i'm feeling good if i'm feeling bad and so on if i just you know feel comfortable which i'm at the moment not doing i you know kind of know why i think it's because you know a lot of people just uh yeah outside of my room which is definitely making me a little bit crazy and a little bit like yeah uh, not feeling that well to be honest but with that being said i hope you're successful so i wish you success wealth health happiness uh, I hope you're giving back something because this is really essential for life at my point of view. And yeah, I hope you have a great legacy. Just be be nice to everyone. Be remembered as someone who who was just great. And I think this is something a lot of people want. And a lot of people just, you know, unfortunately kind of dismiss or kind of just don't think about. So therefore, try to be the best one in terms of being nice. <laughs> I see you.